Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today is our part two of our series on grief and loss. And so if you want to watch the video part one with my dad, Pastor Craig and Ashley Sanchez, you guys can do that in the description below. So now here is part two. So, but I find that really interesting how like a lot of that played again, I think all of that beginning of the relationship of the back and the forth. And then it finally came to her passing and you were like, it finally clicked. Right. And so Mariah, you were saying earlier how, how like what we were saying how you were more of the like avoidant type Mm -hmm. right and so how did how did that kind of play for you in your process of like grieving and like Mm -hmm. losing your mom well now when I see moms and daughter relationship like I cry like I saw I'm not gonna say who but like one Sunday too I just saw like Valerie and her mom and then Shelby and Jen and then Morgan and Jen and then I saw like I don't know, just another mom and daughter, like, and, like, Naraya and Brandy, and I was just like, man, like, my mom's not here, you know? Yeah. Like, that's hard. Um, That's your marriage, right? Yeah, and, but I think when I see how girls respond to their mom, like, rude and disrespectful, Mm -hmm. like, I get mad, Mm -hmm. because I'm like, man, I did that to my mom, like, you were saying avoidant, like, she called me, I now listen back on the family trip, like, after the new years i listened to so many voicemails and was crying because i didn't even listen to those voicemails like she tried to call me like hey baby girl like just wanted Mm. to see how you're doing just and i'm just like oh my goodness like she loved me so much she always asked how my day was and then i'd always complain like you never pursue me you never and i'm like she did and i'm just like man like it just breaks my heart it makes me so sad yeah because like yes maybe i looked at my parents relationship and was like this is why we don't this is why i'm not alone this is why i learned from their mistakes you know yeah yeah. um and like my mom like him saying like the lord speaking to him back to to the story but why would you do the very thing your dad did to you like leave him like love is a choice and i realized that that, yeah my mom my mom wait wait wait, my 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 mafia dad he was never there for me right yeah so then the lord spoke really clear you know there's nothing right back in face he goes so how do you feel about your dad well, before Jesus, I wanted to kill my mafia dad. I was yeah. willing to risk, mm-hmm. kill, be killed because he dragged my mom behind a car. He was beat mm-hmm. her up. And mm-hmm. he goes, is that how you want your son to feel about you? And I went, mm-hmm. and then like psychology says, the abuse will be like the abuse. I went, oh my goodness, I'm yeah. perpetuating the very thing. And then God, but then I said, God, you got to help. And basically I realized I was just so full of terror and fear of being the worst parent ever. Mm-hmm. I came in oh. second. I wasn't the worst. No, okay. No, just Jesus. <laughs> but I said, God, God says, I will. And I said, how do I do it? God, I've never had a dad. And he goes, I will lead you. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. And that's Amen. where the change, even though the foundation was terrible, yeah. but God, mm-hmm. you know, I God think, worked through it. Yeah. I literally look yeah. at your guys' story and I'm like, that just shows that even in the midst of hardship, it, like Romans eight twenty eight is the verse that reminds me, like God works all things together for the good of those who even love him and are called. Them, yeah. And I believe you guys both individually love God and were called for a purpose of ministry. And God knew my dad needed yeah. my mom as a pastor's wife yeah. and starting yeah. up a church. Yeah. Like she was the one who Call called that, the yeah. people. Everyone came. So for me, all that to say, I caught myself being so rude to my mom and like mm. so mean to her because I was like, mm. Yeah, like she had her struggles of like, you know, not feeling. It was like a, my parents were so honest. They're like, it's a crazy cycle with us at times. Like we, what Ryan and I were going through, like the love and respect book and my dad and mom did that too. It's like, well, you're not loving me, so I'm not going to respect you. Well, mm-hmm. you're not respecting me, so I'm not going to love you. And it's this crazy cycle. And so it's like, it, they're like, who's going to be the mature one and mm-hmm. just like do their part. Yeah. But it's hard when you're two hurting people, hurting each other. And like, I, okay. what okay. I am thankful for, hold on, I'm just going to finish okay. the point. Yeah. Okay. But when I am thankful for my parents is that they were the very like definition of like honesty and why I'm still in ministry is because my parents told me their sins. They warned me of what they did. They yeah. weren't 
shying away from we sinned. I know so many parents who don't tell their children we fornicated and that's why our firstborn is born. Like it's obvious with the yeah. math that Morgan <laughs> was born out of wedlock. Like it's obvious, but somehow parents try to hide that. And it's like, Mac that's so shitty. bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Six months. This but is again, normal. Morgan was born through that. That was yeah. Morgan. And he's here today. Like my dad's assistant pastor leading worship. Yeah. And so, that's where for me, like just how I was so rude to my mom was just because I saw her struggles of like, you know, my parents are honest. Like sometimes my mom, because they weren't as close and he was focused on the ministry and she was like pouring kids. into us kids. Yeah. See, that's what, that, then, that's, I, that's what I want. That's what I want to say. Can I interrupt that? That's what I see too. Yeah. And you know, this is a counselor is we transfer. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. why I say, like to Mariah, Mariah goes, oh, let's have kids right away. I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like the men of war. You need, you know, that was to have a kid, but I'm saying you need to have that bonding time yeah. because it was like we, we got married and boom. And now I got a kid, you know, nursing my my wife going, hey, those are mine. You know what I mean? I was like, so <laughs> it was just like, it was so they're really needed. And so what happens, there really was, and because it was a rocky start that yeah. she just sort of went, oh. Your kind of your love is the ministry, mm -hmm. and my love is the Makes kids, the and children. so see what I mean. Mm. And so it's like that's where the you know. And so we were both truly doing well in our sphere and I, sphere. And I spent yeah. time with the kids. You know, I really worked to spend time, but I didn't. We didn't do as many date nights. So it's kind of like she just kind of put transferred her kind of love to the kids. I transferred a lot of mine, and that's where I go. Oh my goodness! And it's like it reminds me of the sad saying. That I think as C.S. Lewis said that they they walked alone and they got married and walked alone together. Mm. And that's where I saw is that we just we could have been so much yeah. closer. Yeah. But I would say the foundation was bad. But but hear this. Yeah. I want to say this too. God is a redeemer Amen. because Amen. it's like yeah. that's what we have to remember. It's like we say, oh, I ruined it. So no, God did an amazing thing. Yeah. Morgan's a pretty healthy kid, I think, despite that. I was born out of wedlock and I was didn't I was pretty, very dysfunctional. Where and I always try to tell Morgan, no, I might have made a mistake, but you are not a mistake. Right. God was, God and so space. and I think God's done a pretty amazing. Like I said yeah. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Our ministry is not a ministry of only you could be like me. It's a ministry of grace. Like I truly mean yeah. it when I say, <laughs> if God can use me, God he can, can use any. And yeah. I think all of us should say that. Maybe not yeah. as bad. Maybe you're not as bad as me or how I was. But, you know, and that's why I say, too, why don't I fall in ministry? Not because mm, yeah. I couldn't. I Because I know I could. Because I've done exactly. things that I said I would never do. I, my, my wife would never. But it's like, you know, and that's, I think, too, and I don't mean to get weird because Candy gets mad at me if I say anything. But, but I think, too, is where, too, I am so about being real and saying, hey, it's not about putting a facade of look how good, but my wife kind of came from that and that also was a big, right? And that's where Mariah was kind of torn yeah. where she was kind of like mommy, kind of fear people at times and want to look good. But then she's kind of like me where, hey, I'm going to be real. I don't care. And it's like, so I wish we could have got a balance in that both where it wasn't like me just like, ah, you know, you know yeah. from the pulpit, yeah. where she'd be like, oh, no, she'd be like, he's really not that bad. Please give him another chance. You know, she yeah. would always try to, fix it and it's like yeah. i'm just like let's balance out yeah. of what i'm trying and to I say there. i feel like that's where i could catch myself avoiding my mom yeah. because i'm like mm. oh i don't want to be like i don't want to struggle with the things she struggles with and if i'm around it then i'll be like that but she would humble herself like she yeah. wanted to change and i did see her change i did see her really step out like in the women's ministry like just share her past like share she what she did wrong. It, yeah she for she years did. she wouldn't she said do not yeah she i said i want to share this and she said do not share from the, the Lord pulpit. really like opened her up. I think it was a process. Like she was yeah. growing, like sh what yeah. she got pregnant and married all the same and moving in a new state and losing <laughs> everything at the age of like 19, 20. And then raising a kid and, and that becomes like your whole life. And then yeah. being a pastor's wife, like it's a lot. And yeah. so and then she married me for my body and then my body <laughs> then went lost bad. Your body. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, what was I thinking? But okay, I look at my easy. mom That's and I'm just like, I'm so grateful yeah. for like having the best mom. And I can truly yeah, say that yeah. the best yeah. mom, like in the whole world, because not only did she like go through a lot of pain and still chose joy, like she was honest. Like yeah. she did share, like she did share the moments of even yeah, things in her past where she's like, I wasn't perfect. Like maybe I'm 
coming out to be like this happened or this happened and i was like thank you for sharing that like and maybe yeah. for her she took a little longer than my dad my dad can just share it to a stranger but like my mom like <laughs> I'm the same took way. Yeah. a little longer to open up to even me as her I daughter i think that's the assembly of god thing though it's the assembly yeah. of god yeah i think so. it's kind of the pentecostal you know, it is. make everything it is. you know what i mean but i don't want to pick on assembly just but it kinda. was so cool because for my mom, like she was the best mom of talking to me about periods, talking to me about this stuff where her family never did that. Like she they didn't, didn't they, her mom she didn't had, know she why I was bleeding. Older sister. Like she learned, but mm. they both came from dysfunctional families mm. and starting. And my dad said that to my mom and they prayed over oh, yes, before yes. they yeah. started. They said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. And so I no, really, I said, I said, we, we I need said to pray against the, the dysfunction yeah. of me. And the dysfunction of your family, yeah. we're going to pray and do our best through the power of the Spirit it. that most of this dies with us. Yeah, we're not going to yeah. pass. And I think that's part of being is honesty. It's not that you don't like. I, it's not that I didn't have any of the dysfunction, but that we admit it and we yeah. ask God to help us quit it. We don't. Yeah. We don't know. We don't just like what, what. What are you talking about? Anger? I don't have anger. No. You know what I mean? Where we just so, honest. So, Mariah, so right. when will we meet? We'll meet every every Tuesday. <laughs> I like to this. Fix Maybe, <laughs> but one of the things I I I want to ask before we close because I do have a mm -hmm. few scriptures that I want to share before we end, and I do want to get like your final thoughts on where you guys are in the process of like this grief and loss. If you guys are even you know on that journey still, but. I know we talked about like your avoidance before your mom passed away, you know, did that avoidance continue or were you able to kind of stop it and, you know, kind of change that, that direction? Or did you just kind of like maintain that the mm -hmm. whole time until she passed? Um, I think avoidant in the sense of, um, what I tried to do after that and Ryan helped me and I feel like God knew that I needed my, fiance during this time mm. is he really like in times I'd be up in my room and I'd be talking to him and I'm just like crying like because I think it was hard as a family to like really talk about it because it's bringing yeah. back these memories so like I really do actually feel for you because you didn't really have anyone to go to like mm. and I had Ryan Morgan had Veli Kenan had Soraya you know like and my dad and Trinity had each other but I feel like I really felt for them so like whenever I tried not to avoid yeah. by like if my dad wanted me to do insurance, like I'm going to take care of this. Like if you want me to do something where I didn't want to my flesh, but I feel like Ryan was like, you need to be there for your family. Like you need to help mm. them in this time because there's a reason why you're not married yet. Like there's a reason why yeah. you're at the home and you only have a short amount of time before I'm like under Ryan's yeah. covering. And so I haven't done the best in this past season because I'm just like so excited to be married. But yet it's still I cry to Ryan. Later, Dad. <laughs> well, I cry to Ryan as much as you think I'm just so ready to be married. Like it's hard for me leaving. Like yeah. And I joke like well, how far can I how can far buy. can I go? I literally will work with you every day. But it's different. And that's where I think like for me avoiding, I guess maybe I can struggle still with like going in my room and talking to ryan when mm. the lord's like you need to go down there and really be there for your little sister like yeah. you need to check on her and see how she's doing and i can humbly admit like well i'm not a humble person but i'm humbling <laughs> myself to say i'm not the best sister like mm. i haven't ever been really a good sister to trinity and like that's well, you're not really selfish, you're just curious, hard so. for me yeah and <laughs> it's like hard for me i guess to hear that statement because like i feel like i keep repeating in my head like that's yeah. who you are no you're a selfish person you're, i know i know it's a joke admitting it to quit it but it is serious where it's like it's a sin so i can't yeah. it's not a joke anymore like yeah. i'm about to be a wife who should not be in selfishness because i could possibly in a year be a mom you know yeah. and so and that's where it's like the very thing you hate in your parents like if i hate that about my mom that's the thing you like you can become that like yeah. i see people who are like oh i hate my mom i hate my dad and yet they become just like <laughs> them so i'm like so i do weird. not yeah. hate, so weird. Them. hate them i learn from them like yeah. i learn from mistakes and that's what they would want me to do that's what my mom would want me to do and so i'm really yeah. thankful that even in the midst of my flesh wanting to avoid that ryan has helped me like mm open like he'll ask me at random times like so give me a memory or thought of your mom that you really miss and i'm like why are you doing this to me now and then i just start crying but yeah. it was so healing and then i felt closer to him right. where i think that was the healing for me is that ryan not being afraid of my tears ryan not being afraid of my 
craziness. Like I mm. felt like a crazy person. I'm like, this is not the time to be in a relationship. But I feel like the Lord is like, yes, it is. Like yeah. I had a fear of breast cancer in yeah. the month of October. Remember, and my remember. mom just passed away of that. And Ryan was right there alongside of me to help me through that. And so I think mm. God knew that it was like, I have my dad and I've had him for 26 years. And now, He's old. and now, <laughs> but now I have like this opportunity to not be yeah. a child anymore, but be my dad's friend and be his help, like support, like, and I, I'm just thankful for that because we've always been really close, but I, I feel like the Lord's like, this is a different season where you're going to be more intentional before yeah. you'd be running yeah. from family stuff. Cause you're like, I work with them all day, but now when you're with your dad, you're like, I can be like, dad, how are you doing? Mm. Like I can meet him for dinner or lunch and be like, I want to see how you're doing with this. Yeah. Where before I've been like the selfish child, like daddy, give me money, you know, or yeah. I want this, I want that. And now I'm like, I really want to step up and like, be that big sister for Trinity, like never be her mom, but like yeah. be that big sister and care about her. Be my dad's like friend and be my dad's also daughter and <laughs> respect <say> him. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not your mom. mom. Um, but that's where I'm really excited for it for this yeah. next season. And so I think it's taken me a long time. Like it's probably just been like, what? Like yeah. in the January that was really, and yeah. so it's cool that we're doing this podcast now. Cause I feel like the Lord's been, not that it's, I'm not like, I still think of planning the wedding and like continuing stuff. And mm -hmm. the song butterfly kisses like is a song that makes me cry for my dad. But now I hear lyrics and it's like, she's looking like her mama a little more mm. every day. And then it talks yeah. about like, yeah. um, just, uh, just standing in the bridegroom, just staring at her. Um, and mm -hmm. just like talking about her mom being there and like yeah. all that. I'm like, well, my mom's not going to be there. But then I get like, feel like, okay, well, I think then of Trinity, like Trinity's like, you should so be so blessed. Like mom gave Ryan her blessing yeah, before she passed she did. away. My she mom did. knew the man I'm marrying. And like with Trinity, she's like, mom's not going to know. And, and like, so it really helps me to stop being selfish. And I'm like, God, thank you for refining me and showing me yeah. like, this is the season to really learn from my mistakes, learn that I've lived 26 years, a lot of it being selfish and being a child, like you know, like you grew up, you're a child, but now putting childish ways behind. Right. And so I think my mom passing almost was like passing the baton where she would do everything for me. She'd do mm. anything for me Yeah. to where now I'm like, now I'm going to be a mom. And mm. I like, I'm so thankful for all she taught me and all she did. And so I don't know. I've just been so, I guess, just really grateful. And yeah. that's what I'm I love. From. I love seeing how, because I think what makes this conversation so powerful is that the season of grief and loss can do I think like one of two things mm -hmm. it'll either really reinforce your faith mm. in God and what the scriptures truly say and what we believe or it really does turn you away to like those outside influences and like what could happen and I think seeing seeing you guys walk through that process and you know like me, I'm very intuitive. You know, I would say if, it, if my one main gift is discernment, I would say that is my biggest thing that I mm. utilize a lot. And I'm and I'm grateful to the Lord for that. And I've seen a lot of those process that like processes that we were talking about today, you know, kind of flow through you guys. And I've seen you as like a unit and as a family. And I love that you guys have been so vulnerable and so open and humbly talking about you know, where you guys were at the beginning. So Pastor Craig, like you at the beginning and, you know, how, you know, once Teresa's life ended and she passed and you were just like, man, that was my mistake. You mm -hmm. know, like I could have done this more. And like you, Mariah, being being open and vulnerable and saying I was avoidant and I yeah. was, you know, I didn't want to see my mom like mm -hmm. that. I felt like we just butted heads too much and it was mm -hmm. just like this back and forth. And I didn't, I didn't, you know, care for her in the way that maybe Trinity yeah. was right. And yeah. just kind of working through that. So pastor Craig, now mm -hmm. we're here, we are seven, eight months, you know, mm -hmm. to the time of her passing. It's going to be what her anniversary come June. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so June where are you right now? It was funny when you're saying that I was thinking, I, you know, and I don't like to give too much, you know, I don't like to climb things, but <laughs> I realized through this kind of like you, and she says she's like me, so I figured she got all the bad stuff from me. <laughs> but it's like I had, I realized too through this, uh, you know, the, I was 
diagnosed with attachment disorder. I used to have to go to professional, you know, state mm. sponsored counseling, whatever. And they said I had attachment disorder because I didn't have my mom died, you know, so I was bounced around. But I realized what I really realized through this is I hate weakness. Yeah. I hate because yeah. I felt so weak as a yeah. kid. I felt tossed around. I never felt secure. So I just, I despise. But now as you're getting older, you realize, I'm getting weaker. Yeah. Like mm. I lift the weights and nothing happens. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I lift a little weight. I'm lifting two and a half pound yeah. weights. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, but I realize I'm, as I get older, I'm going to get, it just happens. No, right. Arnold Schwarzenegger, I was watching him today. He looks weak and he used to be one of the best. Body. So it's like, I have to embrace that, you know, be strong in the Lord. And, yeah. and I realize that I kind of pulled away because my wife was always so healthy, always so strong. And I just, didn't want to see that. And I realized yeah. that's kind of like around my pentacle. I do not receive that. And then yeah. I, I didn't like that. So I, a part of that, it's amazing how things trigger things. That's when I guess, and you know that yeah. as a counselor, but I'm just like, I just kind of like, I don't want to mm. see this. I don't want to believe it wasn't because I really believe she's with the Lord, but I didn't like, I wish you could just turn a switch up oh, time to go. Yeah. And you just like Enoch, you walk with God. You don't have to right. suffer. Right. You just walk. You're just God. And it's like, I, cause I, my wife, my mom just died like that. She I left, she was healthy. She's mm. gone a year later and, uh, and she had died earlier, but they didn't let me know. And so I think that was where I really too realized I mm. didn't, I, I wasn't like Orion who's very compassionate yeah. and very can just be around that and just mm -hmm. really wash people's feet and wash people's butts and just stuff where I just go, uh, -uh. Yeah. you know what I mean? I don't yeah. want, I just, you know, and so that kind of, but mm -hmm. so anyways, I guess where you say, where am I? I realize I've got to, like it says, you know, Ephesians 6, 10, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his. I need to learn to find my strength. Mm -hmm. Not in me, not that we don't have a part, right? Work out your own salvation, but really it's got to work since to will and I need to find my strength. And I realize, like, too, and I might be doing too much psycho babble here, but I realize, too, that a lot of my anger, because I talk about that a lot in the pulpit, yeah. especially, that's really fear. Yeah. I really have fear, a lot yeah. of fear. I just mask it as a man, just. You know, and I realized it's all really kind of fear based. Like mm. I fear and I just I'm like a javelina, you know, they can't see well, so they just attack things. Yeah. So when things and I realized so this what happened with my wife mm. has really brought out a lot of stuff oh. that I think, you know, because yeah. God's so good with timing, right? That that I just now realizing, oh my goodness, I thought I've been a Christian forty one years and I still because you think, oh, I'm done, I'm good, yeah, I'm good, and I'm yeah. like, no. And I think all of us, I think we just have to learn yeah. to admit it. But I, that's why I don't mind saying it because you know, I always say, yeah. I say, if you do the sin in my life, you wouldn't listen to me. But if I knew the sin in your life, I wouldn't talk to you. Yeah. So just let's and not justifying sin. I'm just saying let's be right. humble. We right. all have issues if we're mm -hmm. honest, and we all have dysfunction because we live in a mm -hmm. sinful world. But let's just realize God loves us despite our dysfunction. Mm -hmm. He loves us so much. He's, I love the old hippie saying this. I'll end with this. He says, God loves you just the way you are. Mm -hmm. The oldest yeah. this, this is the Jesus movement said, but he loves you so much. He's not going to leave you this way. And mm -hmm. that's what I realized is God's, even though I'm 60, I'm still a little kid to him. Mm -hmm. And he's just, he's always working yeah. things together for good. As Mariah said mm -hmm. in Romans 8, 28. And, uh, and think about it, that's the key is to those who love him yeah. and are called or given to his purposes. Mm -hmm. And he promises everything. And I can honestly say, like, yeah. I wish mommy was here. I yeah. wish yeah. she was. But I can truly say this really was the best. And even my failure, God worked it out for her. She's mm. now healed, and she's got the yeah. best husband in the whole universe. So I think yeah. that's so powerful. So yeah. I truly, so yeah. it's a it's a bittersweet. It's like yeah. bitter yeah. that I could have, I, I wish I would have learned a little quicker learning curve, but sweet that she's all good, and now I hopefully will learn from my mistake mm. through yeah. the power of the Spirit. I think that's so powerful and you know like I'm so grateful to have been able to like sit here and like talk to you guys about this <laughs> cool. and I, I feel know really good about no, myself. No, honestly, I <laughs> I am I think the more that I've gotten into my career and being a counselor and understanding my own process of healing and grief and loss and I've done that in my own way um not necessarily losing someone that I love but the loss of other things and it was, and just hearing you guys, it's like, I just see a reflection of myself mm -hmm. in you guys and, you know, you yeah. guys and me. And I saw, I, that, I saw, I got to rip. I saw that with you, with your brother. Cause you guys are like, how variety. Or, <laughs> <laughs> but then it's I like, saw, you're too close to touch together. Birth, with butt heads. But weren't you touched by that? And all of a sudden, so you're like my brother, you know, you're we like, joke over business, sit on the bed, sure. like she can't sit on the edge of your bed. She'll <laughs> kick him up. But then all of a sudden she goes, he was really there for me in a tough time. Yeah. That touched yeah. me and you're tearing. I'm like going, 
Oh my yeah. goodness, this girl acts so tough, but she's like, I could do without it. But then it's like, <laughs> she's so him. thankful. I mean, I just, I just love, You're like I love putting people, out my I love, but I love people being real though. Yeah. I just, I just yeah. think, cause why, why not? It, the Bible says in, in Hebrews 4, 13, everything is laid bare before the eyes of the Lord. Too much oh, yeah. Why not just be real? He already knows it. Mm -hmm. So just be honest and then say, God, help me. That's all he mm -hmm. wants. Right. When a, when a little yeah. kid says, you help me, mommy, help me, daddy. You don't go, no, you know, mm. you, a good dad or mom says, Oh yeah, I'll be glad to try to help Amen. you. So anyway, yeah. I, I was touched by that. So I hopefully, hopefully my dysfunction is helping you. Because <laughs> I know, not yeah. saying you're dysfunction, but you're, <laughs> but seeing how you give so much a hard time, but then see how much you really appreciate deep down. That was, that really that yeah. brought tears yeah. to my eyes. Yeah. Maybe one day I'll share share that, but I do <laughs> yeah, want to. You guys are not worthy. One day, yeah, <laughs> one day. But um, I do want to share two scriptures, and they're like some of my favorite. And um, the first one is Revelation twenty one four, and it says, "He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, mm -hmm. nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away." Amen. And Matthew eleven twenty eight through thirty. Come to me, all who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I just love the, the promises of God. And, mm -hmm. you know, I really hope that today's podcast for all of our guests who are watching, I am um, truly blessed to be here with mm -hmm. both of you guys. And thank you so much for sharing probably like some of the most vulnerable parts mm -hmm. of like who you guys are. Not everybody gets mm -hmm. to see these sides like every day. So I am very honored, <laughs> but I just want to remind all our family and friends and newcomers who are watching on this podcast that Jesus Christ loves you guys so much. And he sees every season. Mm -hmm. He sees the beginning of the relationship to the, to the middle, to the end until our days here on earth are gone. And and mm. I just want you guys to know that Jesus Christ is, you know, there every step of the way. And mm. I really hope that you have been encouraged through this podcast and that you can see the joy and the love within the family of Pastor Craig and Mariah. And um, if you guys have any questions on um, the, the process of grief or maybe you just want someone to talk to, mm. drop a line down in the comments. And mm. I would love to hear from you guys and you know answer any questions that maybe you thought we didn't ask or mm -hmm. we didn't really hit or touch upon so if that is you please feel free to leave it down in, in the comments or find us on instagram or on our website we would love to talk to you mariah pastor craig any final words before you uh, go i want to say i say before i forget i'm old is i want to say this is that while you were talking is that to life can either make you bitter as yeah. I say, I'm Pentecostal preacher, that bitter or better. Ooh, and metaphors. I see is that, <laughs> that you, you know, I think the key is, like you said, is to, you know, I'd like A. W. Tozer says, a man or woman of God keeps falling forward. Yeah. Don't quit. Just keep walking by the Spirit, mm. and He will. And you know, like it says, you know, we always forget the clauses in Scripture. We don't like that, but there are clauses where Romans mm. eight twenty eight, all things work together for good. We don't hear the clause, mm. love God and are given his purpose. Amen. And that's where I can say is, was this hard? Yeah. I could, I, part of me is so afraid. Like I can't do this. I can't have this. I, I can't, I don't need this God. And yet I learned so much. God taught me and is teaching me so much. Too. So that's the key. Walk with God through these hardships mm, and amen. you get through it and go, wow, I, I didn't, God did that because I don't know how I would have got through that. And that's the key, the grace of God, unmerited, undeserved. And that's the key to really challenge. I don't mean to sound cliche, but really you do have the choice. Will you make, let life make you bitter yeah. or make you better? Yeah. And, and, you know, cause I can freak out and go, gosh, I'm going to be, I could be alone for 30 years. I'll probably live, like I said, no rest for the wicked. I'll probably be alone around 30 more years. But it's like, I just go, you know, I trust you. And that's what he says. Don't worry about tomorrow mm. for today has enough worries. Just Amen. trust me, love me, follow me today. And I promise I'll work it out. Yeah. yeah. And for like those out there who are like, oh, but I do have a bad relationship with my parent or spouse or something. I want to say, to you right now like you can confess right now like it says if you confess your sins he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness Amen. and First in the day. very end in the last moments of my mom passing away i was able to be with her and i needed that like yeah. i needed that like my little sister my dad protected her and like she wasn't around it because she spent all those times taking care of my mom and i needed that time alone with my mom to like 
take her to the bathroom and look at what her wound looked like and like smell the smells and see the things like and just mm. see like she kept saying she's like our outward bodies are wasting away but our inward man is being renewed day by day like she would say that mm. to me she's like i hate this body like i'm dying you know and she'd admit yeah. that and i'm just like wow like if i would just realize that like i'm about to get married and you care about all these stupid stuff like spray tans and your eyelashes and like makeup and hair and your wedding dress and it's like yeah. why does that matter like my mom is so beautiful she got the wedding day she didn't you know maybe have she yeah. she's wearing white like she gets to have that and so for me i would just tell people is like there's redemption stories and that's how it is for me i was the worst daughter i was not good at all i was so rude so disrespectful so mean but god gave me that time mm. at the end for me to apologize to my mom mm. and i was yeah. like mom i'm sorry like i haven't been the best daughter and i've just been rude to you and she like forgave me and i needed that um That's but yet beautiful. the enemy wants to bring it back up again like but you missed all these yeah. years so yes i'm guilty like it's okay mm. to have guilt mm -hmm. but i love how someone said it but the regret. shame yeah regret yeah. but we are guilty like we're all guilty of yeah. sin so and we've done savior. things wrong yeah but that shame is from the enemy so i just pray that you guys don't walk in that shame and and i'm just thankful that god has uh restored me and even if i didn't get that time with my mom i still know that god is faithful and just to forgive me of my sin sins and cleanse me yeah. from all unrighteousness so. and really cool because i want to keep this going because you said it'd be done in 40 minutes but yes. i'm curious it's an hour baby <laughs> it's gonna be a two-parter but hear this what's so cool about this remember i love this and people forget this yeah. when david sinned with bathsheba isn't that amazing mm. i mean here's yeah. a man after god's own heart he commits adultery he conspires to kill her husband and then he lies about it right and the kid dies a kid dies but what does david say in psalms 51 he says i will be honest basically and teach transgressors your ways i will say yeah. hey, learn from me and that's what i think wisdom i always like to quote this uh, a fool learns from his own mistakes but a wise man learns from others mistakes that's mm -hmm. why the bible says the good the bad the ugly so you can go ooh. What did David do? Oh, when men should be at war or doing their job mm -hmm. instead of being a peeping Tom on a deck. <laughs> do, you know, so you idle hands. That's why the world says idle hands mm -hmm. are dumb. So it's like, but I love that, you know, because I'll hear dad say, well, you know, I wasn't perfect, so hot, and boys will Who be boys. My son's going to be like me. No, 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 no. Yeah. I say, son, I don't want to be like the mom in, in Back to the Future. I never kiss boys. I never. I want to say, no, I didn't kiss boys, but I kiss girls and learn from me, yeah, you know, be better that. than me, right. be learn from my mistakes. I don't want to come off as I didn't, my poop didn't stink, but I want to say, learn from me. Amen. And I think that's the yeah. key is yeah. that we need to be people that are honest. I mean, yeah. you know, and it's hard when you do this because you think people go, because people always say, Oh, pastors aren't perfect. They're just, they're just mm. like us. But then when a pastor admits, he's not for what yeah. I listen to you. I can't listen to you, but it's just like, I, I don't care. I don't really yeah. want those people here anyway, if they're that way. But it's like, I, just really think we should be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't need to tell every detail and overwhelm people, right. but be honest to say, hey, God got me through this. And guess what? God can get you through that. And that's what I think David did. And and isn't it cool? What's so neat is in the old time, I got to say, that's why I'm preaching here. I haven't done this for a while. Make he says, David was a man after God's own heart, except mm -hmm. with the issue with Bathsheba, the yeah. Old Testament. The New Testament, I think it's Acts 10, says, David was a man after God's own heart. Doesn't mention the Bathsheba thing under the blood. Mm. New Testament he says because mm. he did everything God asked for. Now my flesh, what everything? What about Bathsheba? And it's under the blood. It's gone. Yeah. And that's just so cool. It no Admit it and quit it, so yeah, that when right. the devil brings it back, you go, hey, it's cast far as east. Right. You know, homie, don't play that. You know, no, you know, homie, don't play yes. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I'm saying to where you realize <laughs> that it really is, and that's why I say instead of guilt. Yeah, because that's what the devil we saw the slander is Diablo's yeah. devil, right? right? Devil. Yep, we learned that. That's the devil's thing. But you got to go. You got to know your rights in Christ. Yep. I'm yeah, I sinned, but it's on. I've confessed it. I've dealt God. with it with God, and I've dealt with whoever it's concerned. Not that doesn't mean the people you sin yep. against. If there's people involved, and it's under, and you say, hey, I'm it's it's gone. I'm not remembering that anymore. And that's the mm -hmm. thing. So I don't walk in. Uh, I don't walk in shoulda. guilt of not loving my wife. I, cause God assured me that she's being loved perfectly now, right. but I, Shame. but I want to definitely learn. So if I ever, ever think about, um, getting married again, I want to make sure I really do it right and really 
know that it's not just someone to help me with meals or my house. Yeah. It's really, I need to love this person. I mean, really yeah. treat them like a princess. And mm. uh, I, I, I love that. Well, thank you, Ashley, for counseling us. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this will so be every $555. Tuesday will be, yeah. <laughs> every Tuesday at 730, Tuesday. but next time I'm She's charging. Fix us in a month <laughs> from now, we'll be all about it. But <laughs> before we close, do you want to pray for us, Ashley? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Help them, Jesus. <laughs> okay, Lord, especially <laughs> Pastor yeah, Craig, especially Thank Pastor you. Craig, but Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now in the name of your glorious son, Jesus. Yes. And we just want to thank you first and foremost for the time that we had here to just be vulnerable and open and just honest and to pour our hearts out, not just to you, God, but to one and another, mm-hmm. Lord. And we just we just stand on your word where it just says, Lord, carry one another's burdens. Mm-hmm. And I know that, mm-hmm. that is that is part of my job. It's part of all of our jobs as the body of Christ to uplift, to exhort, to to just bring hope, to bring assurance mm-hmm. to someone's heart, Lord, in their time of need and in their time of of grieving. So Lord, I just pray specifically over every person right now who is watching or at the sound of our voices that if you are grieving if you are going through loss to be rest assured that in christ jesus you have you you can and will have everything that you need Mm -hmm. he is your assurance he is your strength he is your daily bread he will give you everything that you need Mm -hmm. to sustain yourself in every season and every day from the morning until the night And we just thank you, Lord, for that promise. And we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you that you wipe away every tear. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord, that all of the sickness and disease in heaven is just gone and it is no more. We thank you, Lord, for just Teresa and the and the legacy that she left with with Pastor Craig and with Calvary Oro Valley and with her children, God. Mm -hmm. And we thank you that she is now a part of the cloud of witnesses Mm -hmm. interceding on our behalf. And we just thank you for that. Um. Lord, and I just and I just thank you for for just her healing and glory. I thank you mm. for just her being with you. And I just thank you, Lord, for all of the for all of the assurance and the comfort that mm. you have brought um, the Rotors family in this loss. And I just thank you for that assurance. And I thank you for that promise. So, Lord, I just pray that you will extend your love and your peace Lord, to anyone who is watching, to anyone who is in need. And I just ask, Lord, that you will just bring those father god who need more of you Mm. and that we're here in tucson arizona and calvary old valley that if you need someone to talk to if you need just someone to listen to you while you're going through this process i pray lord that you will just bring to them those who 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 are willing and ready to be able to bring that support god so we just love you lord and we glorify your name in jesus name amen Amen. Well, if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you'd like to listen to us, wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also check out our behind the scenes on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. And thank you so much to everyone who donates. This is listener supported. So if you would like to donate, you guys can do that in the description below that says donate. And, and also, like to donate to my counseling. Yeah, um, our counseling session. <laughs> our counseling, uh, please. If, if you would like uh, Ashley, yeah, Ashley to answer any of your guys' questions, you guys can, like she said, drop a comment in the thing, comment section below. Or you can also email us by checking out our website, uh, calvaryconversations.com. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless. Mm-hmm.